Hello and welcome to our second episode of the Coromil Plura Insights broadcast on pocket milling. In the first episode, we dealt with grooving and heavy during milling and their challenges. Pocket milling, a challenging operation where a variety of strategies and tools can be used to reach the goal. Often, it is not clear which strategy and tools is the best solution. Of course, here again, we can use our Coro Plus tool guide to get a productive, cost-efficient, and at the same time, a secure solution for this special task. We would like to machine a pocket 85 by 45 by 40 millimeters deep and C45 material. And for this, we use a five edge milling cutter. Let's take a look on how we can use tool guide for this task. We start on the Sandy Cormat website and the task is to machine a pocket with an existing tool. So we are not asking tool guide for a tool recommendation, but we like to use the same tool we use for the full slot milling, but this time to create a pocket. And we have the flexibility here to ask for a process and a cutting data for a pre-selected tool. And in essence, there are two ways to get recommendation. First is to define the application and ask tool guide for a tool recommendation, or in case we know what tool we want to use, we have a pre-selected tool, and we can start with our tool and then ask tool guide to give us a recommendation for the process and the cutting values uh, that comes with it. So in our case, we know what tool we would like to use. So then we have to start in the search box and enter the tool part number. If you are not familiar with the, with the part number, right below there is a description of our tool. So it's a Coromil Plura Solid Carbide End Mill for heavy duty milling. And on the page, you'll see all the relevant information about the tool with the dimension and geometrical feature. Uh, we see here the material classification. So it's uh, designed and optimized for ISO P and ISO K. We have a diameter 20. And the way we jump into our application, right next to the tool number, we have a tab called Calculate Cutting Data. We click on it, and this will take us directly to Tool Guide. But what we see here is that on the left side, our tool is pinned to Tool Guide, and we can only now get recommendation for our pre-selected tool for application and the material that is suitable for only for the tool that we have selected. So we continue now and first we said we have to select the material so we have C45 then new we click on it next is task we click on task we would like to produce a pocket, a rectangular pocket, and solid material. And here we have our pocket, and now we further defined our application. So we see on the right side depth, so we enter the depth. We have a 40 millimeters depth, and a width of 45 millimeters, and a length of 85 millimeters. And the radius, we have 12. A, uh, for pocket milling, we like to use the dynamic function. So we turn dynamic on. Dynamic milling or high fit side milling, it's a preferred method for the pocketing. We will not get too much in the details for high fit side milling or dynamic milling. We'll cover this more in details on the next episode. So let's continue now that we have input all the values we say get results show details and here's the details we see tool guy recommends us a process a two-step process one is a helical milling and then the second one machining with dynamic 
motion to open the pocket. So let's review them both. First, helicon milling. So we are ramping in a helicon motion down into the pocket. And we have a cutting speed of 215 feet per tooth, 0.111. We go down to the different uh, details that gives us spindle speed, feed. We have a feed of 949, but at the feed at and the feed speed at machine diameter is 1900 because we're moving into helical motion. You're programming 949, but the feed at the diameter it is 1900. Working engagement 20 millimeters. So we have a diameter 20 uh, end mill, and we have an engagement of 20 millimeters. So that means we are creating a diameter of 40. So we're making a circular pocket of 40 millimeter. We are taking five millimeter per pass. So each circular motion ramping down into the pocket, it moves at a rate of five millimeter. And that is a total number of passes of eight. So eight passes of five millimeters, it's 40 millimeters. So we are down into the pocket and, and eight passes. And we also see the ramping angle of 4.55. So now that we're down into the pocket, we move to the second step, which is opening the pocket with a dynamic motion or high feet side milling movement. So we have cutting speed of 354, feed per tooth 0.211, and we go down, we see depth of cut 40 millimeters. So we are all the way down into the pocket at 40 millimeters so there's only one pass in the AP direction and we're only taking radial engagement passes so we see number of passes and radially 14 passes so each pass is taking working engagement 2.32 millimeter so we're moving with the dynamic motion at a 2.32 millimeter per pass radial engagement good so now that we got our values and we got a recommended uh, process from tool guide, we have all the information that we need. It's time for action. So let's see a run on the machine. Good. So we see these are quite good values from tool guide, but we would like to show there is still quite good room for improvement. So for this, we would like to do a ramping now with the five axis machining, so we can increase the depth of cut to a six millimeter with the same feet of 0.11. And for the pocket, we would like to go down to 300 meters per minute, but increase the radial engagement to six millimeter. So from 2.2, we like to go to 6 millimeter, and a feed per tooth of 0.18 millimeters. This will give us a total removal value of over 1,000 cubic centimeters per minute, or one liter in volume. Now, let's have a look at this one.
What do you think? I say these are quite good performance from the tool, even with this high elevated uh, parameters. However, we still have big radius in the corners of 10 millimeters. We would like to reduce this to 5 millimeters. Here, tool guide can help us again. Let's have a look together. In order to reduce the corner radius of our pocket, we would like to ask tool guide to recommend us a tool. So here again, we start with the material, C45, and then next task, non-rotating, pocket, rectangular, and solid material. We input our values again for the pocket, depth 40, width 45, length 85, and a radius of 5 millimeters. Here again, we will use the dynamic motion. So we click on, and then we say get results. We see here our first recommendation, a part number. We have here a diameter 10, 4 times D, high feet side milling cutter. Again, if the part number is not familiar, you can click on it and this will take you to the uh, web page and you'll see all the uh, geometrical future and dimensions of uh, the end mill. We'll go to show details and we change the view, and again we have a two-step method, a helical milling, and then opening the pocket. But we already created the pocket, we don't want to start from the beginning, we only use the cutting values for the corner radius. So we have here cutting speed 242, feet per tooth 0.103, and the recommended radial engagement is 0.75, so below 1 millimeter per pass. And we see the depth of cut in AP and axial direction is 40 millimeters. So one pass and an engagement of 0 0.075 per pass. So this is all the information we need to know. And now we can go to the machine and see it in action. We see that our four times diameter end mills offer ideal possibilities to create small corner radius and behave very stable in order to finish the pocket. This is all from us on this episode. If you would like to learn more, visit our website or contact your Sambi Korma representative. We hope we gave you interesting insights and ideas for pocket milling processing. If you are interested in the topic of high feed side milling, then join us for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, make the best of your solid carbide end meals.